Hello Nigeria, hello Africa. You're welcome to Sports Business with Oru4 Azaga. You're watching Plus TV Africa and we're reaching you live from our studios in Victoria Island, Lagos. Today we're going to have a new kind of sport that we're going to be talking about. Usually when we're on this program, we're talking football, basketball, you know, the big sports. But what about the other sports? You know, um, football is suffering. That's the biggest sport we have in this country. Basketball is unarguably the number, number two uh, sport in the country, and they too are struggling. Now, if the big boys are struggling, what about the smaller sports? How, what are the prospects that they have? How can they compete? How can they find support? How can they find success? Today, we're going to be talking about a sport that's not just small. It's, it's a bit um, new to Nigeria, if, if, if I should say so. Um, we're going to be talking about archery, all right? And uh, joining, uh, joining me in the studio to, to do that would be um, the managing director of, uh, sorry, the founder and CEO of Zen Archery Lagos. He is Mr. Emmanuel Oyeleke. He'll be joining us today. And with him is um, Aderonke Adenryoye, who is a member of Zen Archery. Now, we're going to go on a short break. And when we return, we, we are going to start the discussion in earnest. I'd advise you to stay with us and maybe even invite a friend or two to join in what you're going to hear. Remember again, it's Atri. Keep the dial on, on uh, Plus TV Africa. When we return, the business begins. Welcome back to Sports Business with Oru4 Ezaga, and you're watching Plus TV Africa. We're reaching you live from our studios in Victoria Island, Lagos. In the studio with me uh, is Mr. Emmanuel Adeleke. Oyeleke. Sorry, Oyeleke, who is um, the founder and CEO of Zen Archery. And with him in the studio is a member of the Zen Archery Club, um, Aderunke Aderunoye. Now, I'm going to be a gentleman and start with... I don't care. Um, yeah, because I know we're going to be extracting the most from Emmanuel, but you know, they say ladies first, so I'm going to talk to you first. You're an archer, right? Yes, I am. It's a bit of a strange sport, isn't it? Well, yes, you can say it's a bit of a strange sport. And a bit new to Nigeria as well. <laughs> yes, I agree. Okay. So why, why, how, why archery? When, when did you discover the sport and when did you become an active um, participant or an active uh, athlete in the sport? Well, I started archery when the club opened mm. in December and it all started when a friend of mine invited me to the opening. Mm. I had said I was interested in taking up a new sport okay. and I was looking for a sport to take up. Mm. And I got to the opening of the range and we were allowed to try out and we had some basic lessons and mm. I found it very interesting um, because it was a kind of sport that required skill and technique. Mm. You had to be centered and focused. Mm. So it sort of had a way of quietening you to be able to shoot and aim. And then it was, it was also physically exerting. It mm. requires a lot of resilience. Mm. So I started off practicing going there after work because I do a regular nine to five. Mm. And then over time, uh, I, I found I was challenged <laughs> to, to go for the first tournament in March. Mm. And that was like four, four months after I got introduced to archery. I think one of the major things as well is the community of archers, how mm. everyone champions everyone and encourages everyone to you know, improve on their skill and their technique and all that. So yes, that has been my journey so far. Okay. And not just your journey because I understand too that your your child or your children is it child or children? <laughs> so yes, my daughter. Yes, my daughter, your oh, daughter is, is also, also an archer. archer. Yes. Yeah, that's, um, okay, so Emmanuel, let's 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 um, talk about archery. Uh, Fantastic. Well. You you brought Zen archery to I Ilupeju, right? Yes. yes. Yeah? And Ilupeju that's where you yes. got engaged yes. um, in the sport. Now, you used to be. Not an archer. Yes. 
You used to be what exactly? Oh, like I've been so many things in my short yeah. life. <laughs> <laughs> I've been a computer programmer. Yeah. I've been a photographer. Yeah. I'm still a photographer. Okay. Uh, I've been a scrabbler. I've, okay. I've played scrabble at the highest level, the world championship level. Oh wow! Uh, and I mean, I've done quite a few things, but mm. I've settled in uh, to uh, explore my passion for for archery, and I I wasn't always an archer. Mm. Uh, the journey started, I think, in 2018, mm. where uh, because of my passion, I used to be a badminton player, actually, too. Wow. Uh, I played at the West Africa Polytechnic Games. Mm. And uh, because of my passion for sports, sports has uh, really done quite a lot for me. Because mm. uh, while I was in the university, I was on scholarship for three years mm. uh, in full tuition private university okay. in Nigeria. So you can imagine how Why, much because of sports? just because of sports. What because sport was that? Scrabble. Oh, I was okay. playing Scrabble. So, uh, so I, I, I believe in the potential for sports to uh, lift a human from nothing to something. I mean, I, I don't think I'll be who I am today if I wasn't engaged in sports. Uh, and it stemmed also from my father, as my father was a goalkeeper. Uh, oh, okay. he, used to, he used to play for Bafemi Aulo University uh, oh, all these days, traveling mm -hmm. around. And even when he became uh, a lecturer, I mean, they go for senior staff games or whatever mm -hmm. it is that mm -hmm. they do. So I, I really had interest in sports, mm -hmm. although I didn't do the regular sports. Uh, I didn't do football. I think my father was frustrated with teaching me how to play football. So <laughs> I never took that yeah, up. Yeah. I played table tennis at some point. Um, so, uh, so yeah, archery. You are, you are yeah, sports, yes, I am a sport person. enthusiast. Yeah, yeah. Um, so archery came about when I was looking for something else mm. to do. Uh, I stopped doing sport for about uh, eight years because I started photography, mm. and photography was very demanding. Sport is always very demanding, so I couldn't mm. combine the two together. Mm. Uh, but I was able to find. I just was interested in learning archery for some strange reason. So I started searching all over the internet in 2018 for someone that could teach me archery. Uh, then I came across uh, Ladi Alakwini. Ladi Alakwini is, uh, is based in the UK right now, uh, mm. but he founded Lekki Archers Club. Uh, so I found him, I messaged him. He was like, okay, well, you're interested in archery, no problem. I'm coming back to Nigeria in one year. Mm. If you can wait for me, then no problem. I'll teach you mm. archery. Mm. Then after a year, he came back. And he had his first uh, beginner's uh, course, uh, or maybe second one actually, in Lekki uh, Lecky Pinefield School mm. in Lekki. And I, had, I enrolled for that and I started learning archery. And immediately after the class, I bought my equipment and I started doing archery. Coincidentally, he sent my first, the first pictures he took of me while he, he got me my first equipment and sent it to me today and i just couldn't believe why, how why didn't you got. send those pictures i will you? send it to you thereafter i mean no, so you would have used it for <laughs> yes i know but, but in any case um yes so how do we know mm. you know because let me try and lead the, the yes. audience yes. To, yes to um to where I think they'll be comfortable with you. Yes. How, how do we know, for instance, that mm. this is not another passing um, passion? Passion. Yeah. Uh, well, uh, I would say it's not a passing passion, and even if it is, uh, while I'm passionate about this, mm. I will put platforms and people yeah. in place. It's not just about me right yeah. now. It's bigger than just me. Yeah. Uh, we started off Zenatry in December, yeah. and right now we can boast of over forty active members Any of, yes, yeah. of Zenatry. And not just that, as we speak to you, our uh, staff are in Lakwa Lakes engaging in activities Great. that will introduce other people to archery. Uh, and yeah. all these things, you can say, even if I decide not to be passionate about it, mm. I've generated enough interest in that space. people will take it up yeah. and run with it. Okay, so what what um what does it take to to be a member it's actually first yes let, let me even yes is, is, is it a very expensive sport would you uh, say i would say yes it is an expensive sport i wouldn't <laughs> lie to you it is expensive when you want to do it well but yeah. what we've been able to do at the club is we made it easy for you to be able to take it up 
because yeah. we have all the equipment yeah. you don't have to buy anything yeah. for you to start learning yeah. it's already we made it available at the club at very cheap or a very low cost yeah. so that you can just walk in you can walk in with your child with your wife with your family and have a go have a go and then eventually when you see that okay this is something i really want to do mm. then you can become a member of the club and after a while when you know that you're really really interested you can start investing in your own equipment but that was before madame joined and she, so she's one of the deep pockets that um... no no i wouldn't say that <laughs> <laughs> so when i joined yeah. when i joined i used the club's equipment yeah. and by the time i did the first tournament because um your equipment is like an extension of you mm. If you are going to go pro, you mm. need to be so used to e the equipment that you can predict what and when. Mm. And you can't do that using borrowed equipment. Yeah. Mm. So if you plan to do like go for tournaments like I plan to do, mm. it's, it's, it's usually better for you to have your own equipment. Mm. So you could have mastered and configured it to your own setting and you can use it Absolutely. as much as possible. Yeah. So yeah, for me, it was because I, I realized that doing the tournament sort of fast tracked my learning. Mm. And it made me interested in doing more. Mm. So when I did in Nigeria in March, and I saw how the impact it had on developing my skills and fast tracking my learning, mm. and I decided, you know what, let me try an international one. Mm. Let me see with other people outside my mm. environment mm. if, you know. And then I went and I was like, hmm, we could go Africa wide with this. Mm. So, so that's just it. It's not compulsory. We all have different um, reasons. You the password. You skipped the part where you want the goals. <laughs> yes, I did for the compound women's <laughs> category. Yes, okay. in Cote d'Ivoire. All right, that's that's um, that that has been exciting so far, you know. And I think this is an exciting sport. Something I like to try myself. Absolutely. You know, because Absolutely. I I like to think that I have the the focus and the the the, the discipline. To make and I mean, you, you mentioned it yeah. discipline focus coordination yeah. those are some of the things that actually will teach you yeah. uh, I mean you never know if you're patient mm. until I mean sometimes you, on a good day you're shooting and all your arrows are good mm. on a bad day you're shooting you're doing everything right mm. and something is not just working, working that's yeah. when you now need to be patient, patient even more yeah. patient and look inside until you find and, your rhythm and find your rhythm again so okay yes. so this is a business mm. program, yeah? Uh, so we're going to talk about what you think the impact of, of, you, you, of as actually yes. can be in Nigeria. You already highlighted that sports is very critical to, to, to nations. Yes. And, you know, um, to progressive civilizations, I would mm. say. That there's not a progressive civilization in this world mm. where yeah. sports is not a major component. Absolutely. Do you understand? Yeah. And Absolutely. It is something we still struggle with in this part. You know, the fact that look, sports is not just about coming up with you know glamorous tournaments, um, tournaments and you know it's a way of life. Absolutely. People should start it when they're young, and you should. They're, they're usually community uh, driven. driven. Do you understand? Mm. So even if it's football, you you should be part of your community, community. club, yeah. um, your community Afri club, and all of that. Your community table tennis club, and that's what it creates some sort of community identity and pride. Yes. You know, and, and you know. So this is not something we do yet here. Mm. So which is why, for instance, you find that when Nigeria was supporting. Um, clubs, clubs in the UK, in Europe, and all of that. You know, <laughs> because if you if you did if we did it the right way, we will be proud. Then of. we're we're yeah. we're really invested in our own. Uh, absolutely. And and I think that's what probably you started with with your daughter. How old is she, by the way? She's ten. Ten. Yeah, she started when she was nine. Nine. What sort of progress do you sh think she's making? Um, significant progress. She yeah. has also gotten her cousin to join. To join. So she was. They were both at the. Um, summer camp mm. this year um convinced Atri camp. <laughs> yes yeah. summer actually camp. okay so as a parent wh what sort of impact do you think this has had on her, her life one her is, character and her yeah her, her so one is confidence okay. she's more confident because she's had to interact and engage people much older than mm. her and she mm. has to speak okay um when she then is also sportsmanship knowing well that you know that's on the screen by yes the way. Yeah. knowing well that sometimes you fail Mm. And you have to pick yourself up and go again. Yeah, yeah. That you failed once doesn't mean that you are not good enough or that mm. you cannot Do win it, yeah. the next time. Mm. Mm. Um, also, it, it's also the 
ability to aspire and dream and see that there are, big, there are bigger things you can do with yeah. whatever you have. Yeah. So she's so like now she gave me an assignment to do for her today and it's it was just self motivated mm. because she's trying to you know improve on herself because she has mm. seen the potential mm. basically in doing things like like archery which was very new and strange mm. to her like she's the only one in her school that does archery mm. really yes so she has to keep explaining this is what it's about yeah. this is how you do it and yes well, can, how do you get to parents um, through through her child, for instance. Yeah, I, mean, yeah, I, I, I think I, I think it's a gradual process. Yeah. Uh, it's not something that can be forced. Yeah. Uh, essentially, because of the nature of the sport mm. itself, uh, I mean, it comes with a lot of uh, technical skill. Mm. It's not a round ladder that you can just pick up and Play, knock yeah. around. Point, point. Uh, but that's why we keep uh, going out with the message of archery. We keep telling people there's a safe space for you to practice archery. Uh, and what we're also trying to do is also take it to different schools. Mm -hmm. uh, but we'll definitely engage in talks with them first because we can't, uh, number one, they need to have a safe space mm -hmm. to practice it. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, those are some of the things that we're going out to do. That's why we put up the, the summer camp. Mm -hmm. We had parents come in for summer camp, mm -hmm. bring in two of their children in the family. And these people, after the summer camp, they've signed up to be members of the club and even though kids have returned to school uh, they promise that maybe weekends when there's time they can always bring their kids uh, to come and practice more uh, they're looking at buying equipment for their kids so we're looking at still just reaching out to more people uh, the more people that are able to experience the sports uh, the more uh, people know about it the more people tell people about it and I'm sure the more uh, parents and, and young ones that we can uh, we can get. Okay, so how do we grow this sport in Nigeria? Do, do you, for instance, have um, national championships at this time? Yes, uh, yes. It's something that uh, we've had in the past. Okay. Uh, although, I mean, it's been a bit, it's been a bit uh, tough for the past few years okay. because uh, there's been so many back and forth when it comes to the um, organization when mm. i say organization i'm saying organization that is seen to uh, the progress of archery vis-a-vis -vis the federation in nigeria you have the federation for archery, uh, yes, yes okay. we have <laughs> we have a federation but i'd rather not uh, <laughs> not go into the details of uh, okay so what, i know where you're been. coming from yes yeah? yes and because of this program i get mm. to deal with heads of, I, I get to deal with people in different spots. Yes. And all I can tell you is that your, your experience is mm. no different from any other It's sport. not isolated. You know, which, <laughs> which means that there's still a long way we have to go with our sports. Absolutely. But that's why we have here, we're trying yes. to, yes. you know, because we need to get sports mm. um, to become, um, you know, critical, a critical component of uh, our Absolutely. Our I, I, I absolutely think it. like sports is, is one of the, after the family, is one mm. of the best agents of socialization. Mm. Uh, because sports can the teach you discipline. Yes. Yeah. It can teach you discipline. It can introduce you to communities. It can give you support. Mm. In my own case, I, I was on scholarship mm. playing Scrabble. I mean, how many people get that? Mm. I mean, paying. I mean, so I, I feel like sports is one of the very, very important things. And the earlier we we start looking into so-called lesser sports that mm. you mentioned, I mean, um, not well, lesser, smaller. Well, small. Well, <laughs> they call them lesser sports in yeah, oh, some yeah. uh, in some quarters. Yeah. But I will tell you what: if you go to the Olympics, the only medal is only one medal that you can win out of football. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. How many can you win from archery? Several categories. categories. Several categories. Okay. So well, at least in Rikov alone, you have the single male, single female. Mm -hmm. Mixed double uh, <laughs> team. team, that's four medals already. So, so he makes a point that I like to make all of the time. Yes. Do, do you, you send a 30 man team mm -hmm. to win one medal to the Olympics to chase one gold, mm -hmm. medal. which is not sure. <laughs> do you understand? And your chances are less than 10%. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And there are other sports, even though my favorite example is swimming, because with yeah. swimming you can do up to 30 something gold medals. Exactly. Yes. Yeah, exactly. Okay, anyway, so with sports today, uh, mm. you need to start 
conventional wisdom mm. uh, is that you should start very early, maybe before five. Yes. Uh, otherwise, you, you may not be able to compete internationally. Yes. Mm -hmm. Do you understand? Yes. Do, do you get a sense? Is this the same with archery? Archery. Yes. I, I would say yes and no. Mm. Yes, because the earlier you start, yeah. the fast. I mean, the more... Uh, your chances of going further mm. but we've seen a lot of people who have not started that early mm. we have a world champion now i mean well suppose it, like past world champion mm. brady we started when he was 15. oh yes and he's been is i think he's about 35 or 36 now mm -hmm. and he's still won still silver at the last olympics mm -hmm. yeah so uh for archery i think it's a little bit more because actually doesn't have a age barrier. Mm. We have people that are 50 that are still actively competing. Mm. We have people that are 70 that are still actively competing. So, uh, that, so I, have a I have a chance. Then. Absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. Too. No, no, absolutely. Yes, <laughs> absolutely. Yeah. So it's, it's, a, it's a sport that doesn't really have like an age barrier. So yeah. far you can move. Yeah. So far even we have the para, uh, the para archery. Yeah. Where and we have some oh, of them yeah, are yeah. extremely yeah, good, yeah, yeah. and yeah. we yeah. even at that last tournament in, uh, in, in no no not in Cote d'Ivoire no. in Nigeria in Nigeria in we introduced the category mm. which featured para athletes okay. in archery okay. and it was well received. Okay. We had athletes about five or six yeah. athletes that did para archery at the tournament. Okay. Yes. All fine and dandy so far. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So where are the problems? We have identified costs as, yes, as one cost. of those problems. Yes, mm. yes. And then I imagine there's not sufficient awareness yet. Mm. Not uh, yet, not yet. We're sport. trying our best. Yeah. Um, for instance, the I mean, you can tell the last uh, tournament we went for in, uh, in, in Ivory Coast, we tried to get sponsorship. Mm. Uh, ten athletes went from Nigeria. Mm. Ten athletes spending at least two million each. Mm. That's, that's about 20 million mm. that we had to raise by ourselves mm. just to be able to. So, to who go. finance it? You, you finance it yourself? Self -sponsored. Self -sponsored. Yes, self sponsored. Wow. Uh, and obviously, we did well. We won medals. Mm. Uh, but it but shouldn't. Did you win any cash rewards or anything? No. Yeah. yeah. No, sadly. <laughs> sadly. And, and that's one of the things that I really wanted us to be able to, yeah. uh, to change. It's a notion that we have to change. And I feel like if we start doing this in Nigeria, Nigeria, when we start things, we, we turn, turn things around. Yeah, yeah. And I think that's one of the things we can do with this. Mm. Uh, we, we need to make superstars of archers mm. in Nigeria. That's one of my, that's one of my motivations mm. for trying to put this together. Mm. We need to make super... The same way we have like, uh, athletes that are superstars in tennis, mm. uh, in football, mm. we need to be able to boast of the same. Because we spend, if not much more money mm. than all these other athletes are spending, we spend on our equipment. Yeah, we spend on maintaining the range, maintaining training. Mm. It's 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 not child's play. Mm. So why are we not able to reap the same rewards yeah. from the? I mean, the same or even more efforts yeah. that we are putting into the sports. So those are the things that we we okay. really need to do. All right. Um, We've been talking about archery in Nigeria, and um, in the studio with me has been uh, Emmanuel Oyeleke, who is the founder and CEO of Zen Archery. And uh, with that is, is um, a member of the club, of the Zen Archery Club in Ilupeju, Aderonke Oye. right? We're going to go on a short break now, and when we return, we're going to be talking more archery, and this time we're going to be looking at, you know, the commercial opportunities in the sport. Um, locally. All right. So stick with us. It's a short break. Don't go away. When we return, the business continues. Now, welcome back to the program Sports Business with Oru4 Ezaga. And today in the studio with me is Emmanuel Oyeleke. He's the founder and CEO of Zen Archery Ilupeju. And with him is a member of his club, Aderonke Adenryoye. Uh, today we've been talking archery and um, we're looking at the opportunities for the sport in Nigeria. It's a relatively new sport to us here in Nigeria and we're looking to grow this sport, you know, in a country where there are so many other big sports like football, like basketball, like um, athletics, you know. What are the, uh, the, the chances or the opportunities for archery in Nigeria? Now, let's talk to Madame. 
Yeah. Because you're the one who bought into archery. Yeah. He he he, he, sold, well, he, built, <laughs> he, he sold it to you. Yeah. Okay. So now, as a parent and um, as a, a a young woman, yeah. Uh, what prospects do you see for archery in, in Nigeria? Well, I would say, one, I see a, a time where we have tournaments mm. and the amount of economic benefits it brings to all those involved. Mm. Um, for example, when we went to Cote d'Ivoire, we mm. had over 200 delegates from West Africa. Okay. And that meant hotels, food, mm. Mm. transport, mm. you know, it also meant equipment. Mm. So many things had gone in. Mm. And so it, it shows that um, if as a sport, we, we develop it well. And mm. that was just a tournament that had six countries out okay. of West and Central Africa. Mm. So if we developed it to, to be something that had more participation, mm. you could imagine the amount of you know, activity that mm. could develop around that. The other part of it for me is that, you know, not to even talk of apparel, mm. because for example, we got a lot of um, a lot of compliments mm. f for our kits and mm. all that from there. Who and so developed the kit, by the way? Nigerians. Okay. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, well, they like the designer of this tracksuit yeah. is a member of our club. Oh, okay. A designer as well. Mm. So the member, of, a design of this was done here in Nigeria, printed here okay. in Nigeria as okay. well. So there's 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 a lot of opportunity, mm. basically, even mm. parts of our equipment, mm. like our um, arm guards, arm guards yeah. our bots, and stuff like that. We are beginning to find people who can manufacture locally, locally because yeah. not everything should be imported, yeah, basically. Absolutely. So there's, there's even, the, even the art of repairing equipment mm. and all that. We are beginning to see locally people developing that. Mm. And when we got to Cote d'Ivoire, we saw the bamboo archery. That's people developing um, arch, arch, um, archery equipment with bamboo. Mm. Although it's not a category that is global, mm. but there's already a, an economy around it. People mm. buy, people shoot. It's a mm. category that people um, introduce people in, um, into, especially mm. younger ones, before they get into um, serious equipment. So there's a lot of potential around mm. it. Um, running camps, running clubs, running tournaments, getting sponsorships, mm. people winning prize monies. Mm. Because the last time we did it in Nigeria, the participants won prize money. Mm. If it didn't cover cost of equipment, at least mm. cover cost of logistics, yeah. and they're attending the tournament as, it, as a whole. So yeah, there's, there's a lot mm. um, that could happen if mm. it is pushed properly. We're also hoping that over time, it's also an avenue for uh, scholarships, mm. um, depending on where... Okay, but as a parent, when you relate to other parents, what, what, what do they tell you about your interest in archery? So most times, they are, they are intrigued at, I think primarily because of the lack of age barrier, mm. that I could pick it up and be able to go for a tournament mm. and actually even win some mm. medals and that I could actually be practicing side by side with my daughter, mm. despite the fact that we're in different categories and all that. I think for, for a lot of people, that's, that's the interesting thing. Mm. They see it as a means of bonding mm. and you know, having shared interests with, 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 with your child, basically. Um, and you know, for other sports, if I'm in the football category, we can't be practicing together because we're in very different categories. We have mm. to go in very different mm. teams. For this, we can actually practice side by side. Mm. and prepare for tournaments even though we are using different equipment and all that so yeah so those are those are the interesting things the mm. team bond the the, the, the bond it builds the dynamics. yeah and the dynamics of you know working and you know growing together with your with your with your with your child actually yeah that's what they enjoy about it okay so i'm going to come back to you <laughs> on how much marketing you're doing you know to win more followers for the, <laughs> for for actually <laughs> But I see this imposing thing that you have in front of you. Yes, uh, this is that, uh, this <laughs> is your th this is the the bow, yeah. This is a compound bow, yes. Yeah. So we have different categories yeah. in archery. We have the compound bow, yeah. we have the recurve bow, and we have the bear bow. Hmm. Uh, this is an example of what a compound bow looks okay, like. Okay, so let me tell you what yes. came to my mind when I saw this. Yes. Um, I've forgotten this guy's name. Was this really mean guy in um, Game of Thrones? Uh, that goes loose. Oh yes, yes. You know, the, I, I can't remember the name, but yeah, yes. Yeah. <laughs> oh dear, I don't remember. But yeah, so you have this, yeah. And I think, okay, so it's a skill. You didn't mention that, but it's also a defensive skill. Mm. You know, if you have this and you have to <laughs> fight for it, <laughs> <laughs> it's a skill to have. But but so 
so tell me, what's the, this? It looks pretty expensive from what, what I can see. Uh, yes, this is one of the top of, this is a top of the line mm. uh, equipment from the manufacturer that manufactured this. Okay. Um, uh, it's a compound bowl mm. and the operations of this, how it differs from a normal recov bowl is because mm. it has pulleys mm. and the pulleys help and give it a lot more power mm. than when you have a normal uh, recov bowl. Yeah. So pretty much I'll just highlight the key uh, parts of this. Please, bowl. please. This please. is what you call the riser. Okay. The riser is where you hold the bow and it's what holds the limbs together. Okay. This is what you call the bottom limb and this is the top limb. Okay. limb. These are the uh, pulleys. Yeah. Uh, they are called cams. Yeah. And the cams, the strings go around the cam. Yeah. So pretty much the way this works is once you pull it back, okay. uh, it generates potential energy in yeah. the limbs. Oh, okay. And also the cams are configured in a way that it adds a lot more energy okay. to what you're pulling. So this is typically a 60 pounds or a 50 pounds bow. 50 pounds is 25 kilograms mm. or thereabouts. Mm. So that's the force you are using to pull it. Pull, yeah. And that's the force is generating. It turns it into kinetic energy so that the arrow that is attached to this string can go and strike to that. that target. That's pretty much how this How works. much apple, apple <laughs> have you seen before? Uh, well, I mean... Does it have anything to do with physical so, size? Yes, yeah, well, it doesn't have anything to do with physical size, mm. but it needs a little bit of strength. Okay. And that's how... The reason why we do this is we graduate, we start with something not so heavy mm. at first, mm. and then gradually we start increasing the poundage mm. over time until you're able to uh, pull something yeah. uh, much stronger. So the, the essence of it having much poundage is so that when the distance, when you're shooting a longer distance, mm. the arrow oh, can, can travel. eat, travel. can travel faster yeah. and less interference from the wind yeah. when it's stronger and then it's the target that you're aiming it at. That's you don't cool. have this in the national uh, sports sports festival. Really. We're still working to get it into yeah. the festival. I think we're, a, I think we're, we're trying. It's an Olympic sports, yeah. but over the years, in terms of administration, we've not gotten the best of it okay. because uh, just like a lot of things in Nigeria, the people that are n that know about the sports and are genuinely passionate about mm. the sports are never the ones that. Run the, get, show. run the show so uh, we have people running the show that really don't know anything about mm. archery and they're just there for so the how, did, how did they get appointed then well that's another story <laughs> for another day. Oh. <laughs> that's another story for another day this this i had a guest once yes. that said he, a kenyan by yes the way, that said that uh, a kenyan cricketer mm that in Kenya, there were, there were basically two provinces where, where cricket is well played. Played, yeah. And, but then you have to subject the leadership to a voting process that involved 47 provinces. Provinces, you can imagine. 45 of which didn't Don't know, much know anything about. about And then they have to decide the fate of the two, the wow. fate of the two yeah. provinces. That, that, uh, but that's, that's another thing. Yeah. We, we are making progress. Absolutely. We are, we are people, how many times have you seen archery on TV, on yeah. national TV? Yeah. This is progress. Yes. And you know, so these days I tell my people, let's celebrate the little, the little wins because those little wins will then culminate uh, into morph big into ones. bigger things. Yes. And, and, yes. And, uh, so this is exciting and yes. uh, this is well received. Mm. So to Madame, <laughs> tell us, who, what's her role exactly? Um, is she like some sort of... Um, no, it's not, not like she has a direct role in the communication. Are, are you an executive of the club? Well, by, by inference, she's a communications expert. Ah, <laughs> I know that she's speaking so eloquently. About yeah, but okay, so do you guys have like a structured or a, an intentional uh, marketing plan. plan, you know, to, to recruit more parents? In the not just in the Lukwaju area, but maybe in thinking about scaling up to um, other areas, either by getting them to come to Lukwaju or to introduce new outlets around Lagos. Yeah. So yes. So we are. So we have started developing that mm. um, because there's also the need to have clear pictures of where we're going to and mm. be able to paint it to 
the general public. Okay. Um, so we've started working on that and started also trying to share the information with members mm. of the club. And what we, what we do for now is anyone that has experienced archery mm. or Zen Archery Club, spread the news about your experience. That's mm. what we've done so far. Mm. And um, we're looking to get more sponsorships, especially corporate sponsorships. Mm. Um, next year, we plan to host uh, uh, an open championship, mm. the Zen Archery Open Championship, and have delegates from across Africa come mm. in and expose our talents here to, you know, T um, what the opponents basically mm -hmm. for lack of a better way to put it and just let people experience the beauty of archery mm -hmm. or at a an africa-wide scale before the um, um africa tournaments that would happen later in the year mm -hmm. so these are things we're working on mm -hmm. primarily to get sponsorship it's an expensive sport it's a lot to bring people together to do um we're also um hoping that more and more people can see the beauty of it. And those are the things we are doing because the more people see the beauty of it, the more they can be convinced that, that there's potential. Mm -hmm. Basically, that's how I experienced it. I went for a tournament and saw the beauty of it. So how can we get more people to be at tournaments and experience the beauty of it? That's, that's what we're trying to do, basically. Okay, so, yeah, you guys have said this is an expensive sport. Mm -hmm. Expensive sports are, are played by... <laughs> people who are, who are powerful and well placed in society. So why are you struggling for sponsorship? Uh, it's new. It's new. Yeah, yeah. It's, yeah. it's new uh, and we just need to get more people interested in it. Uh, we need to get the Do right Do you have like traction. a corporate, a corporate um, um, archery event? Like for corporates? Like yeah, yeah we, we, we do archery experiences. Where oh, okay, what I mean is, do you have something say where a GTB staff can play against no, not uh, yet. M not MTN staff. Not yet. Not yet. Because for that yeah. to happen, mm. yeah, all these different back. people mm. have to I'm really experience it about. first. Yeah. Yeah. And then we can. But obviously, uh, when we are in places like Laco Elix, for instance, yeah. a lot of people go there for team bonding yeah. exercises. Yes, yeah. And over the past three months, We've had like different teams yeah. from different companies and corporate organizations yeah. go Excellent. there and they get exposed. As we speak right now, yeah. some people are there getting exposed. Well, to do you have actual, somebody on ground? There? Yes, we have staff. We've trained staff and we employ staff that go to these different places. Mm -hmm. uh, the range at Ilukweju is also run by uh, two uh, female staff mm -hmm. that are there uh, seven, six days in a week, yeah. uh, Tuesdays to Sundays. Uh, yes. I'm right, sir. Yes, 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 yes. That's a that's a very smart smart. Um, uh, uh, absolutely, and I think it's strategy, it's stra yeah. strategic too. Uh, but we need more places like this. Mm. Uh, we need more opportunities to showcase the okay. sport because it's only when you experience it. Uh, a lot of people would say, "Oh, they'll come around to the club and they'll be excited. We want to shoot." Right, because they've experienced it in movies. Mm. A lot of people say they play iPhone games or <laughs> i games. They play archery, and when they start shooting, it's a, it's a lot. It's a lot of. It's a lot different from what they've experienced so mm. far. Because people are struggling to like. Oh, I didn't know it was this hard to mm. pull. Mm. And people, after like twenty five minutes, they already ah okay. I didn't know that it was this strenuous. Let's so we need to. People need to experience it more to mm. really know what it entails to have like a detailed perspective of what the actual mm. entails and we're, we're striving in our own way in our own little way to do this uh, spreading the word spreading the gospel uh, as much as possible uh, trying to make it easy for people to experience yes. it mm. that's the thing so we even have sometimes where uh, the people in the community I would say maybe on the served people who I mean street kids and stuff we bring them in mm. and we even expect Pose them to eat, to to the game. Just give them a lesson or two, yeah. and they're so interested about it. And yeah. we've been able to. I mean, one of the uh, girls that came uh, from the streets, she comes regularly to the um, to, the to the range and mm. and shoots. And we're hoping that okay, well, once she gets her skills up to a, a certain level, maybe if we're hosting our next tournament, we can even sponsor her to go for the tournament well, okay. and that becomes another opportunity for someone that never knew she could do actually to inspire, to inspire society, ab yeah, absolutely yeah. because one of our things for self mm. and for community that's our that's our mm. uh, mantra for mm. for in zen actually for self okay. for yourself 
because when you're doing this, you're improving yourself. Mm. Uh, consistency, dedication, hard work, all these are things that are required for you to succeed at Atri. Mm. And I dare say at any spot, mm. right? Yeah, yeah. But particularly at Atri. Mm. So when you do this, you're helping yourself. Mm. And then when a critical critical ma mass a critical mass does this where it's inspiring the community yeah. so because everybody gets better yeah. and that's one of the things that we stand for okay yes. so join it look if i want to join zen actually yes <laughs> see the man smiling <laughs> <laughs> if i want to join zen actually yes I would have to pay money some subscription fee I absolutely mean. but you can try out first i mean uh, subscriptions goes into like maintaining the equipment mm. we buy mm. most of this equipment and keep them mm. uh, for people to be able to use also, i can try out before yes yes, yes yes you can try, you can try out, before try out for as long as you want before yes. you become a full member yes. but if i'm trying out i pay yes, yes. yeah yes. like what kind of fees are we looking at it's nominal 15k for you an pay. hour yes <laughs> 15k uh, for an hour. I mean, I'm poor. <laughs> Jesus you know why? You know why this yeah, is. Yeah. I mean, yeah. when you go to probably other countries yeah. to try out. I mean, for instance, the no, list. No, no, I'm not saying it's expensive, by the way. Oh no, no, I, I understand. I'm lamenting my own fate. Yes. That, uh, but, no, no, no. But okay, so, um, so to join you guys. Anybody can just walk in. Anybody can there. walk in. Do you do any sort of promotion um, of the club? Yes. Not actually now of the club. Uh, well, actually, is integral to the club. That's only that's the only thing we do at the club. Okay. So. okay. You are not the only actually club. <laughs> no, we're not. We are about not. how many do you think? Uh, we have quite a lot. Uh, at really? least yes, in in Nigeria. No, so, in Lagos. Oh, in Lagos, we have Lekki Arches Club. Mm. We have Zen Atri. Mm. We have. Uh, the police college mm. and if we're counting we have takwa bay club there's a there's a club in takwa bay mm, okay. yes uh, i know that there there was one at landmark beach uh, but i don't know if whether it's, still yeah there. whether it's still there i know that there was the one Do they there. have in abuja oh yes. yes yes they have several in abuja there's arch club in abuja mm. uh, there's shooters club in abuja mm -hmm. uh, i think those are the two that are the most firefly. Probably. there's firefly initiative in abuja equestrian. yes equestrian actually uh archery and horse riding yeah. they do that in abuja okay. uh there's arewa nights okay. uh but i'm not sure if that's resident in abuja so or you're, you're pretty much around the place now yes yes we're we're growing we're okay. growing steadily. Yes, there's, uh, there's, there's not a formal club in Port Harcourt, but there's mm. someone that does it in Port Harcourt. Mm. Um, there's a club in Edo State. Mm. There's a club in Rivers. Mm. Uh, there's one in Ilori. Uh, we started, uh, we started, there's one in Ibado, yeah. actually. Yeah. Uh, yeah. King's, King's Men mm. Archery mm. in Ibado. Mm. So we're, we're, we've recognized that this sports, we can't rely on probably the government or the federation mm. to propagate it mm. because i tell you actually has been in nigeria formally formally since 1993 or 1994 mm. yes formally okay yes we've had successive presidents mm. of the federation mm. actually was uh demonstrated at the 2002 bauchi games oh wow that's 22 yeah. years ago, years ago yeah. and still it's not a sport yeah. and so you can imagine where the disconnect comes from mm. Mm. right so this is what we've taken upon ourselves that you know what it doesn't really matter we'll do what is in our might mm. to propagate the game but you, you know to make to be at the game yes to become a national sports yes festival game yes i imagine that it's young people that will be looking uh looking yes to, mm. both you know, both young future. Uh, both young and, and old because of the, the I mean, mm. the, the way the game is. For instance, uh, it was just National Youth Games mm. just finished uh, a few days ago. Mm. And mm. one of my, I mean, it was demonstrated at Youth Games in Lorry mm. some like two or three, four years ago. Yeah. That's archery. Yeah. But still, it's never been. So this is what we do. Mm. Uh, for instance, I, we try as much as possible to encourage mm. people for the people going to the youth games encourage them to go and even demonstrate mm. but we need the legislation we need the the political know-how mm. to be able to make sure that okay well now that is there 
uh, now that it has been demonstrated, we need to push it in. We need to make sure it's, we it's all part need, of it. We, all need, <laughs> we need this back end. Yes, that's, we need, that's, we that's need government the, to... Yes, we need to, government uh, to really look into it to and make it happen. Yes. To even understand. I had mm. a former minister of sports mm. on the program who said that, you know, that really that government really doesn't understand mm. the power of, of sports. sports. You know, and that's so what I believe too. There's a point you made earlier, and I, and I think of all of the things I like about sports, right, that's the, 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 the most, maybe the one I value the most, mm. and, and that's the fact that, you know, it gives you re resilience. Yes. And, and the fact that you've lost today doesn't mean th that doesn't you can't pick up yourself. You know, because when you wake up tomorrow, sports teaches you that you have yeah. new opportunities. Absolutely. To, Absolutely. To, it's a clean uh, slate. Yeah. 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 And so let's let's start to bring this home home now. Yes. You know? I, I'd like to have you guys again. Absolutely. I mean, just I don't want you people. I don't. Want you want your ones. ones. I want. <laughs> what's your last name? Iriolua. Iriolua. Yeah, we have. I'd, I'd like to hear what I experienced. Mm. Yeah. Um, okay. Is with the sport, you know, and um, how it makes her feel, and, and where she wants to to go with the sport, you know. And I quite agree with you, you know. There was a tennis tournament we had recent, um, um, not too long ago, and yes. some mother came with her two daughters. Mm -hmm. they, they, they saw the excitement and they said they wanted to play tennis. Mm -hmm. you know, that's what we should do. Yeah. We should develop a new culture of taking our children out yeah. to, to this. I, I would say it's, uh, I think it's also a new thing. It's mm -hmm. a generational gap that uh, our parents failed us. Mm -hmm. I, I wouldn't say failed us, but they failed to see because our parents were lots of nine to fivers, they were mm. focused on their careers. And uh, as you are the kid, you have to focus on building a career too, <laughs> not sports. But when right? I well, up, now it's changed. I mean, where you are, you are a different yeah, generation. Well, yeah, well, when I was growing up, <laughs> it was uh, different. Gen yes. X. Yes, mm -hmm. it was different. Yes. Yeah. yes. When I was growing up, yeah, mm. my parents were not into sports. Mm, but well, I used to go to the stadium. Yes. You know, even as a university student, we'll go to the stadium to watch our football game. So I, I, I'll tell you what, I'll, I'll tell players. you the stories I heard. Why that society? Uh, the stories I heard will be so literally a day to, or two days or three days to a tournament where another club is coming from outside mm -hmm. Lagos to play. There will be buses packed in so ah. All the hotels are booked. The, the, the stadium is filled up. The match is 4 p.m. On a Saturday. Yes, the stadium Somebody is filled. They yes, sleep they sleep the over. Because yes. they don't want to pay. Actually. So they sleep in the stadium and then they wake up in the stadium. And so that's like waiting almost 24 hours. Hours to a match. We, we need to go back there. And, no, we and need unfortunately, to. Unfortunately, I think that personally, when I boil it down, I, I think two things happened that mm. we, we couldn't cope with. Mm. One, globalization became a thing. Yeah. And two, cable TV brought into our homes. Mm. Easy TV. So couch couch viewing mm. of, of sports, you know, mm. so, um, so on a final note, yeah, um, what, what, what do you, would you like to contribute at this point? What do you think we've missed that you'd like to contribute? Where are the opportunities for people who are looking at us now and saying, okay, maybe there's something in actually, you know, how do I get involved? Uh, what, can I make money from this? You know, what, what would you have to say to them? Um, what I would say is there is a, there's a huge satisfaction that comes with the sports. Okay. Um, um, especially the amount of how, how much it helps your mental health, mm. especially when you're in a country like Nigeria. Mm. <laughs> and then secondly, because it's also in quotes, for lack of a better way to place it, in lesser sports, it mm. means that there are not too many people there yet. Mm. So with whatever you're doing now, you're still a pioneer, mm. and there's a lot of ground you can cover, mm. basically, as against trying to find your voice in other bigger sports. So and basically, you can become a big fish in a small pond. Exactly. Mm. Um, and then also, because there are multiple categories, it's never boring. You can move oh, okay. from left to right. There's no age limits. You can't be say, say you're too old to do the sports. There's always room. And then there are so many tournaments around the world that you can constantly be exploring, exploring as, you, as, you, as you go along. Mm. Um, also, I would say that in terms of sponsorships, um, corporates should begin to look at doing more things around sports. Mm. Not too many people have sports sponsorships mm. as part of the things they do for their CSR. Mm. 
so sports sponsorship should be something that especially when you're talking youth empowerment mm. should be something that they also need to begin to look at okay. and not just um, about um, music concerts yes, and stuff yeah. like that yeah okay okay see good point and i'll tell you why earlier we talked about you know how progressive civilizations um, invest in sports what she just pointed to is very important in the sense that in north america for instance 70% of all sponsorship, wow. all sponsorship goes to sports. Wow. And as a matter of fact, according to IEG, which is like one of the world's leading bodies on, on sponsorship, yeah. as of 1984, it was 90% of all sponsorship wow. going to. So if you're a corporate out there, you're not investing in sports, you're probably not investing in building a better society. Hmm. One minute, um, Emmanuel. What what's your what's your final word on this? Uh, how do you where's the money? Who do you employ to come and do your shows <laughs> for the young people that are listening? You know? uh, well, uh, I would say, uh, I don't care, I said it all. Mm. <laughs> uh, but uh, there's always room uh, mm. for there's always room for more. There's always room for doing better. Mm. Uh, I think one of the things that I and we essentially have inculcated is we can't. Uh, we can't play. Uh, we can't play lesser. Uh, mm -hmm. So if we have something being done outside of Nigeria, we should be able to do even better, mm -hmm. or at least do it at the same level. So uh, whatever it is that we're doing here, yeah. we're making sure that uh, it's standardized, it's standard. Yeah. Uh, we go toe to toe with anybody. Mm -hmm. uh, so we're not we're not playing small time. We're not playing, uh, and we're in it for the long haul. Long haul. Okay. Uh, that's it. And so that's our program for today. Uh, we've been talking to Emmanuel Oyeleke, the founder and CEO of um, Zen Archery in Ilukweju. And with him has been Aderunke, Aderioye, and Archer, and a member of Zen Archery. That's been the program today. Next week, we have a very important guest, and we're going to be talking uh, big time football on the African continent, all right? And um, so, until we meet again next week, it's me, Ogufo Ezaga, saying, um, be productive, be good, and stay safe.